Hello guys. Hello. We're live, right? We're live. Not yet. I think we're good. Not yet. <laughs> good. Not yet. <laughs> can you guys see us? Hi guys. I'm watching you. You're not here. Say hello if you can see us. There we go. I think we're live now. Hello guys, thank you so much for joining us today. It's uh, 4 p.m. on a Friday afternoon here in uh, Dubai. And um, we have this um, live stream for today in relation to our ongoing competition, which is the Otaku and Me Modeler's Cup. So every Friday we'll have different kinds of live streams showcasing um, different aspects of the Modeler's Cup. So we might be doing some workshop, we might be discussing some past winners or some great kits that we can have a like a discussion and have yeah. like uh, give people an insight to the different builds and the different techniques that there are. So I'm again I'm Paolo and with me I'm is James. James? But today we're gonna refer to James as TK07 Networks. TK for sure. We <laughs> just call him TK. So, in addition to what Paolo said, on uh, my side, I'll try as much as I can to help out or um, share my experiences joining competitions so I can share tips, tricks on how to approach your builds. Um, going into competition competition side so mm -hmm. how to be competitive or plainly just enjoy the Otaku ME modeler's cup the experience yes James has um, 18 years of experience in building yeah. this uh, model kits at the same time he has joined some of the biggest competitions worldwide so he knows the ins and outs of the the scale modeling or the gantla building competitions i, I do hope so yeah I, well <laughs> i'm pretty sure he does so he knows the ins and outs he's been there he's done that he's won it so what better way to actually get some insights from him get get some tips from him so today's live stream it's called build breakdown so we have three kits here in uh, our table i think they can all see it right? mm -hmm. they are if you guys all can... great kits huge kits yeah so what we're gonna do these are three kits from our collection if you've ever been to our store you've probably seen these kits displayed so right now with the james uh, knowledge experience and expertise We'll try to break down the builds and see what made this builds like really stand out. And yeah. hopefully that will give you guys some tips, some insights, and try to help you in your own builds if you're already starting your builds with That's the modeler's That's the main stuff. focus of this um, mm. topic this afternoon. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we said on the first time, this will be connecting on our modeler's cup. So it mm -hmm. will be a series to guide you, um, give you insights on what's coming up, what mm -hmm. will happen for future modelers cup, or to help you out. Um, then, I think, Paolo, do you? Yeah, uh, we're just waiting for some more viewers here. And okay. guys, if you have any questions regarding the kits here or regarding the discussion, if you want to ask something or just add to the discussion, uh, say something on the comment section and we'll be happy to answer your questions, okay? We're not gonna be focusing on Gunpla alone, scale models, anything um, that pertains into competition side, modeler's cup, fire away, mm. ask, ask those questions. And guys, please don't forget to share the live stream. Let your friends know, especially if you know someone that is interested in joining our competition. Let them know that we are live right now on YouTube. Share the stream to your friends, to your family. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And maybe, yeah, we can go ahead and start. Mm -hmm. um, first kit, um, we'll start with our scale model. Scale model. So, so you're looking at... Yes, it's a, a 1 to 24 scale. Uh, from Fujimi, it's the Ferrari 250 GTO, 
which uh, built built by Mr. Yoshio Sekitani. Sekitani? Yes. Yeah. He's a Japanese yeah. modeler. Yes. For this build, actually, um, if you're um, okay, if you've been through uh, um, our store, when you go through the scale model section or aisle. This is the first thing that you'll see coming from our main entrance, <laughs> like mm -hmm. um, going to the scale model section, the first car on the side, this is the one that will greet you because we really want to highlight this one. It's, um, we're proud of this. It, it has been um, gifted to us um, by Mr. Sekitani. Yeah, Mr. Sekitani. And this is actually one of the winners on our last modeler's cup. Um, last 2020, 2020. Yes. Um, it best won in show, I best think. in show show cars yes car um, category and as the topic said we will try to break down um, this build and how it got into that point that it, um, it got competitive mm -hmm. so maybe you can get tips or or breaking down your builds too on how you can um, categorize your build to target certain um, aspect of the criteria in a way mm -hmm. on, on just check through those tables target those and one more thing you need to understand your judges too yeah so that's very, very important, important. Yeah. coming from experience i guess uh, yeah i yes. usually when doing competition builds that's the first thing that i have to study is uh, first, you'll come up with a concept, right? Mm -hmm. Concept really matters on competitions because you have to stand out. Um, if you're one of the best painters, you're, you're one of the, the best builders of scale models and stuff like that, you will still need to stand out on the judge's side in terms of visuals, creativity, the concept. Um, if you're into diorama, your storytelling, strengths need to be there mm -hmm. um, if you're doing um, like this a majestic car build it's as you can see it looks like out of the box right it but looks like a <laughs> die cast model it it does personally <laughs> um you can see it already on the it's clear on the yeah, yeah i the think camera. it's very clear how how polish it is but i'll go into detail um, on how this mm -hmm. kit particularly won yes so uh, please do I, i'm actually very excited uh, you can i zoom in the, Guys, the number of people that has asked me if mm -hmm. it is a die cast model i, I can't yeah. count it anymore okay. so they always some of them even like uh, insists that no this can't be plastic it's a die cast <laughs> model i have to like really prove to them okay that it's so not. let's go one by one. <laughs> First thing is it's not out of the box it's not an out of the box build mm -hmm. there's a lot of modifications that he have done first okay. thing is he shaved a lot of plastic guys <laughs> so he reshaped a lot tons of it um if i can just like be safe and show you this area particular area those intakes there those are um, finely crafted actually so he reworked all those intakes to like um millimeter of thickness mm -hmm. to to be as accurate and in scale Mm. When you're working with scale models, um, scale factor is the plastic usually is thicker, right? Yes, that's correct. So um, they they have to like shave a lot of plastic to like um, replicate the thickness of the metal in. There you go. Even those. Okay. and um second thing after he prepped all the the plastic to to the exact thickness or millimeter openings and stuff even there. 
I'll zoom out a bit. Even all these openings were reworked. Okay. So after that, guys, you have to um, research too in terms mm -hmm. of the, the base model that you're using. I'm pretty sure the Fujimi kit is not um, one of the best kits to use for this GTO actually. So mm -hmm. we've done a lot of work. Um, and then all these trimmings, you know, he, he worked a lot there. Photo Etch is the, <laughs> the most um, used here. He used a lot on the hood, um, on the headlights even i don't know if we can still show i cannot like angle this one <laughs> but all of this part of the tire rims are all rework it's not stock okay, they are yeah. all potage if you can see they are all hair that is one up. of the highlights of this build yeah. actually the rims yes but for me mm -hmm. um the most work that i've seen him done is the the work for this windshield over here especially this side this is not stock see he actually like cut thin clear plates to replicate a very thin sliding um mm -hmm. canopy or, or um window window yeah. if, if this are actually rework it's not stock already you can see the overlap of um sliding panels there mm -hmm. yeah engine bay detailing so that's gonna be one especially with scale models guys the details really matter and when he entered it on the competition um this one he actually opened the hood so in order to All highlight it more words, right? yeah. um, wirings and I can only mention another guy that does the same level art of craftsmanship. Johnny, if you're there. Yeah, Johnny is watching. So. <laughs> the only thing that is not stuck here that I've noticed and I'm laughing every time I see it is you see the yellow part over there, man. I hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on that side. He actually used... Um, a Gundam decal, the warning, and it's mm. to scale the danger for. If I'm not mistaken, that is for brake fluid. No, not brake fluid. But there's um, a decal from Wave there on this side. <laughs> it's like a caution decal. Yeah, caution decal. And. Yeah, it's, it's visible. Now it's visible? You can see it? Maybe you can zoom in. Let's try. So, it's already zoomed, maxed out. <laughs> and one more thing that he did with this is the interior detailing work. Mm -hmm. You see the steering wheel. Now, if you go close up, I hope I can share this one. So, there. See? There, you see the instrument panels, the, the side of the doors, that there's still brake lines there. Now you can really see aluminum works on the side with rivets. If I take this out, you, you can't really like go into detail, but all those are in there. Instrumentation, roll cage also. So the amount of work that he did mm -hmm. to to the tremendous to my, tremendous yeah. amount of work micro detailing you can say <laughs> even on the shifters um, gauges those are all pot edge with proper decal work I really like this a lot and I think this is the original chroming yeah some guys usually do foil works here but this one was done proper and the work on photo edge is like majestic here especially this one 
because on the stock i know these are all plastic and they don't have holes mm -hmm. they have holes but those spokes are really thick but this man is um there's a lot of scratch building involved yeah it's very very thin yes yeah. i ca i can't even how was he able to attach those really thin um a lot wires? of um time follow man you need um the proper tools that's one mm -hmm. which we keep repeating mm -hmm. invest on your tools um not on kits <laughs> unless you're going to build them in a lifetime mm -hmm. tools so um proper um the thinness how, does, how can i photo edge benders he have mm -hmm. i'm pretty sure he used that for the straights um tweezers that are like exact then i think he rimmed this one properly too mm -hmm. yeah the spacing of all those spokes are like spot on and when um the competition was 2020 this is one of the most favorite car build yeah the thing is even if you're not a fan of cars or you're not a fan of scale models at all just seeing this you can appreciate it yeah a lot of people that just pass by uh, to the store and ha know nothing about scale models or is not interested in cars can really appreciate this build and um, the the I, thing with this mm -hmm. is people do just walk by it it's a good car mm -hmm. but if you understand this kit alone yeah you, you you will know the tremendous or uh, the the amount of work that was put in it yeah if the you compare the out of the yeah, box can, side by yeah. side it's all not to mention the good the, mm -hmm. the the paint job that is really spot on on this thread mm -hmm. he got it to the it, this is a difficult thread to get how did he paint that no this is a custom uh, mix color paulo mm -hmm. it's a custom mix i'm pretty sure he added some so in, in terms of how he painted it how do you the, think he the, the usual to, to get this um polish effect there's there are ways but mm -hmm. if you can see the reflections you can't even see any blurred out edges that's one that i can say that um, this are, is almost like a perfect paint job in terms of car mm -hmm. because this era of cars mm -hmm. um, especially this um, car before they never really did a, like a showroom finish compared to the showroom finishes right now it's more glossier than this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but this is a gloss good um, how to say it properly era specific finish mm -hmm. you can say so even the era specific he was yeah. very detailed in terms of like yes. how the cars were shown during um, the, that a lot era. of guys also like join when you're joining competitions for um international plastic modeler society um, ipms um that are joining cars they usually are very careful not to over polish it too for example this era um, if you over polish it like to the the gloss finish of cars today mm -hmm. e even with a perfect paint job you will lose because it's not era accurate yeah, they, mm -hmm. the, the judges will know mm -hmm. unless um you did custom uh, um custom it you entered it in a custom competition mm -hmm. for example it's it's a restoration project so now this yes, and that uh, yeah. but but on this is. competition we don't do that so um you have to remember guys that when you're entering um competition it also matters um to understand what type of competition you're joining one is a phys physical competition is you're there you submit your entry um sometimes you have your documentation with you the more stricter competitions have that you, you have a file that, that documents your build IPMS or I've joined mm -hmm. um, they have like documentations of your build what did you do if you're joining out of the box you still documented the web stages that you did um, but with modified like such as this the documentation part of this would have to be like minimum five pages just to like mm -hmm. describe everything mm -hmm. that you done work everything. workflow and stuff and there you go and that's one right physical competition you have documentation 
Second, it's still a physical competition. You bring your competition, they judge it. Mm-hmm. Um, the first one is more stricter because they're screening. Yeah? Guys, um, are you following? you have any clarification or we're just <laughs> throwing out there? Mm-hmm. Um, the third one are online, especially right now with this pandemic ongoing still. Um, you have to adapt. So there are like online competition. So with online competition, the trick is you show the best qualities of your builds on your final um, submissions. For example, um, I'll have to, with this submission, I'll have to like highlight my work on the engine bay. My interior work would be part of those um, collage or stuff. Then my finish on those um, four photos, I'll have to like take a picture of it on this angle. That's my one that's practically my second that's my third and a top view fourth right so i i'll still have like one view second Mm -hmm. third um panels that is exposed because if you take pictures for example I'll give you a highlight or help when you're preparing for online competition. For example, usually side views, they'll take a picture and put it back. The image that you send is this. You're, you'll end up it with uh, an image at the side only, not highlighting um, some areas, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, we can see it's amazing, on the, but you just waste a wasted a few angles that is important when i'm doing my side i'll do this that's my side view right it highlights one two three yeah very important for online competitions you have to really the picture is really what you're sending out as yeah, good as, as your, your build may be, uh, the judges will only judge it based on the picture. So you really have to invest on that good picture yeah. to send out. So, but as as someone that has just started painting, mm-hmm. it, to get that kind of shine, do you have like like a simple tip on simple how tip. to actually if I'm trying to get something as shiny as that okay. one? There's, What's the process? Um, the, the process for this kind of like finish is long mm-hmm. and you need a lot of patience. Mm-hmm. I can say there's no shortcut to it, mm-hmm. but I'll break it down in, as we said, break, <laughs> break, break it down. down break down the build, <laughs> yeah. Because a lot of people break really down. asking, like if they're going <laughs> to paint their, their kit, they, they use this as, as inspiration. I want to be as shiny as this. So. Yes. Um, it's not just the paint. Mm-hmm. It starts with your preparation. So, with glossy finishes, I'll start off with preparation, right? Mm-hmm. Preparation means from plastic, bare plastic, you'll have to like really get down and gritty, sand off the plastic, take out those imperfections because this plastic, um, even if it, uh, it looks perfect from mm-hmm. out of from the, the box. Runner, yeah. Once you start laying down your paint, you'll see some waves, you'll see some sink marks and stuff. Mm-hmm. So prep work means your sanding stages on the bare plastic. You have to like sand it down to the smooth um, base. Yes. Okay. That doesn't matter if it's gunpla. Cool, because yeah. there's a lot mm-hmm. of guys that do gun plug, gloss mm-hmm. finishes too. True, true. So cars, scale models. It, it concerns I all, I yeah. think. Uh, yeah. Aircrafts, uh, civilian aircrafts, not the military ones. Mm-hmm. So you have to sign prep. Um, second is lay down your primers and paint, base, pa- base paint jobs really smooth. And on those, in between those layers, you still have to do spot checks. Spot checks means you're checking for imperfections on, on your texturing, orange peels, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You have to be careful that you don't um, overlook those 
because if you have those um, rough spots, especially on um, terminations like corners and stuff like this, these are the usual suspects for um, orange peels, this area, because you're not painting parallel to the you're not painting parallel to the plastic you have to follow the contour some guys just paint like this yeah so you're closer yeah. here but you're actually like laying space um bigger here mm, that's, so that that's will, a good tip yeah so you yeah. have to follow yeah. parallel yeah. Mm -hmm. so because if you do um airflow will um hinder this one then you'll create orange peels on those and when you have orange peels that will pile up then create your your rough finishes mm -hmm. you'll never get to this um, type mm -hmm. of finish okay so be careful on your base paints and painting stages number three as i usually said be patient with your um, polishing stages and clear coating um, once all of your colors are laid out you'll still sand it down you'll um, lay your first protective coating right mm -hmm. which is gloss then you'll start using your decals and stuff like that if they have decals then you'll overcoat it again with um clear coat you'll start polishing that's what i said it's mm. a long process yes. if you want to do this that's a lot involves a lot of polishing yeah. as well so a lot of guys actually show ah this is gloss finish yes it, it looks gloss but if you do the proper gloss it will look like this so polishing will take number three a lot of polishing stages mm -hmm. from sand, wet sanding um using compounds um mm -hmm. buffing wheels and wax, stuff like that. wax will, it, will be on wax. the last stages yeah. so that's part of just the, like uh, guys just like when you're building a real car it is the process is pretty much it's not it's pretty much the same it, you, if you want to achieve so that there, kind there's of no secret to it mm -hmm. because it's it has been done overly done in, through the years mm -hmm. it has improved because of the materials that you've used you have more tools that you can use to help you shorten that before it was just like nitty-gritty that like using your thumb fingers to mm -hmm. do your polishing now they have buffing wheels yes you have um routers that can help you do that um, for you there's ceramic coatings already mm, there's a lot uh, of things that you can mm. actually do now that's one of the more, secret yeah. of johnny i think he's using ceramic um polishing compound Shh. no longer uh, it's no, no longer, longer a secret sorry johnny <laughs> well it's there it's made by hasigawa tamiya i think they have too so yeah i hope we'll have it soon johnny mm -hmm. who's online now right now we have uh mr william navarro oh, saying hi, it's will. a masterpiece johnny is watching omel is there uh, hopefully william will have how many entries 10 I think. <laughs> he committed 10 and yes guys if you have any questions if you want to just create a discussion let us know through the comment section this kinds of live stream we mm. want um to like engage with you so if i'm saying something wrong you can correct me mm -hmm. you know or yes. a point of discussion wherein i can improve the the technique maybe i don't know the particular techniques that mm -hmm. you know please share guys we want to learn too i'm and not yes. in no way no it I don't know everything, so mm -hmm. I, I want to learn from you guys. Too. Mm -hmm. okay, actually, this is more of like a discussion. So yeah, if you guys can give us more insights about this particular build. If Mr. Yoshio Sekitan is actually watching right now, yeah, if you can up, like man. give us a jump in. What did you do? Yes, with exactly. First thing I will ask, can mm -hmm. I keep it? <laughs> I think it's ours now. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, you, me, you, yeah. personally. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely... Uh, it's 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 a really really good build and a lot of hard work was put into it so if you're gonna take that as inspiration just remember that it takes a lot of trial and error probably on his side yeah. before he's able to do something as good as that yeah it took time he mm -hmm. he took his time here in in this build but the the favorite part of this build or what i can say that pulled the judges here mm -hmm. because when he displayed it looks like that right um when you're breaking down his build you are meant to look at it closely from afar see i think ide keeps mentioning this too so there's three steps every time when he breaks down build 
if you're interested on, on the build from afar already it pulls and attracts you on the second stage right mm -hmm. second stage is usually what you see yeah the, the from from the moment that you you're closer to it that's the second one um first one is it needs to like pull you in the second uh, pull you in to look for further um like interest right the second stages are would be this ones i can say already because those are the visible marks on this um fantastic build then the third would be pulling you in closer for um to look even um on micro details and that's what set this build apart mm -hmm. um when you look inside all those consoles the belt works inside mm -hmm. um even ac ducting there are grills in it man the actually AC... seeing something that you weren't expecting yeah that's like the best feeling yeah. like whoa it's there the dashboard <laughs> actually has actual um how to say toggle switches mm -hmm. <laughs> you can see man it, it would have been good if we had like a micro shot here but mm -hmm. um the dashboard have toggle switches um the signal lights stick uh, the calipers you know all the photo etch on those um shift gears then brakes it's i i really like it and mm -hmm. even the locks for the belts it's there guys mm -hmm. i can even like uh, i'm really careful doing that but it's there you can see the steering wheel clearly and from the side there you go you can see a loose You can see the toggle switches there on the stick shift and he even matched those bucket seats yeah. buckles all are all there properly installed mm -hmm. the aftermarket parts there's a lot of aftermarkets that does this but some of um, the guys or builders only do glue them together without even thinking on how to like um fold the belts and stuff mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. have to do it accurately if you want to like go into this level level of accuracy mm -hmm. even that da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. i'll show it again see that ferrari there that's photo edge but it's done perfectly There, you can see. Those Finally. rims for me, that's the highlight, really. There Those you rims. Go. Yeah. That's insanity. <laughs> Bending those wires to the perfect spacing. I don't know. I think that's the perfect word to perfect adjective. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, it is. It is an insane build and we are very honored to, to have, have it here displayed at our store and have it showcased or shown to all of our customers that is um, visiting the store. It's just a marvel to see. So thank you so much Mr. Yoshio Sakitani for allowing us to have this amazing amazing piece displayed here. It will be treasured for life here. For sure. It's okay. like our modeler's bolt. <laughs> you know? Kept. Mm -hmm. Alright. Okay, okay, so... Right, we're gonna move on. We have two more kits to discuss. Okay. You wanna start with the small one or the big one? I think I'll start off with the small one. <laughs> oh, okay. The next two kits that we'll be discussing are both Gunpla, but yes, very different in size. The other one is an entry grade 1 to 144 scale and the other one is a master grade 1 to 100. So we're pretty much showing you that uh, there's two there's options two in two ways of doing yeah. it. Yes. You can go small or you can go big. Yeah. <laughs> and on top of what um, Paula said, you can simplify or you can join it with out of the box. Or you can 
do it overly modified mm. and still <laughs> stand out. Yes, de- de- definitely. So just how you build it, it doesn't matter if it's small. If mm. you've done it properly, sometimes David beats Goliath. I think so. Yeah. So yeah, we'll start I'm, with. I'm adamant with that. <laughs> Even the one is the one four four scale can be, um, beat a PG, for example. Mm-hmm. And I've seen that in happen, happen multiple, multiple times, times yeah. multiple competition. I can cite a lot yeah. of example that it has um, mm-hmm. been done. So, so next kit. Next kit. This is a one to one forty four scale. It's the entry grade, uh, recently released by Bandai last year only. Mm-hmm. It's the RX seventy eight two, yeah. with and this one is built by the man beside me. Yay! <laughs> By TK07 Maxwell. So, Who is let's it? Let's break it down. Okay, so let's break down this build. For example, for this competition, just an example, Modeler's Cup have an out of the box painting competition on there, right? So mm-hmm. you'll have to come up with a custom paint job of your basically out of the box build. Mm-hmm. So. This is an out of the box build, custom painted um, entry. So, first off, I, I started with a concept how will I stand out among any other out of the box? Because you're joining, for example, with out of the box builds um, with the same base yes. model. Yeah. You'll have to figure out your concept. How you have you, to start. How can off you with be your, different? Yes. How can you be different? You cannot do um, straight paint job with the RX seventy eight colors. You can, but you still have to find ways to stand out on how it will be unique. Exactly. Because mm-hmm. it's being judged as um, out of the box, right? Yes. So the ones that will stand out will have higher points. Basically, mm-hmm. if I'm judging, I'll have to like look for who's more original. Mm-hmm. And creativity is creative, like a big plus yeah, yeah. points always. It is. And on our um, criteria, creativity is a big plus factor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, and knowing the judges, they are a bunch of creatives mm-hmm. in their Definitely. own um, field. They, they have their own strengths. They have their own um, styles. So, you have to pick your um, concept properly if you're mm-hmm. going to target how um, to play on the judges mm. side because it's a competition it's like any other competition guy whether it's it's sports yeah or um, chess it's you think about the competition the the, the opponents mm. or the competition criteria you have to in a way think there's if, always different factors here's the thing involved, um, yeah. I, I want to to um, later it or make this as important as possible if if you're going to target and be competitive if you want to be competitive if you're really targeting on um, competing with the best of the best research um, do your time um, because if you say that I'm doing one hour already every day doing my entry what makes you think that's enough Another guy from across um, the pond in Philippines is from work. He starts um, from 7, he'll mm-hmm. sleep at 4 a.m. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. don't think that it's enough. If you're going to be competitive, don't think that it's enough. Someone out there is doing more work than you every time. That, that is my motto. Mm, that's my, coming that, from James. Like That's how his mindset is whenever it, he's into yeah. competition. Um, yeah. One example, a lot of you will tell, I have no time, I have no time. If you don't put in the time, then what makes you think that you, you will have like an entry good enough to compete mm-hmm. with the rest? Mm-hmm. If your mindset is to compete, okay, there's nothing mm-hmm. wrong joining competitions to have Just fun. To have fun yeah. Please don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. That's why I, I don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. If you want to join competitions and enjoy, just enjoy. Hi guys, <laughs> we have fans here. So enjoy the process. 
maybe in the future you'll get competitive and you want to like really push yourself mm-hmm. to be competitive you have to change that mindset so you 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 have that switch to turn on man i have to focus and second is it's important to do manage your time meaning create your schedules for me i'm a schedule guy mm-hmm. every time with the guys they know already i keep asking where's your schedules <laughs> so you you make your schedules so you can target your timelines and right now i can say that by now you guys should be done with your concept stages and roughing out your mass massing or um, any of your um, concept on modification it should be done even on layouts on your um, base mm-hmm. that should be done by mm-hmm. now and you're mm-hmm. working towards your goal on your modification on your next step exactly. so going back mm-hmm. with an out of the box let's go back to this camera so my concept before here is to like keep it like a bare metal and a combination of wood so that was my concept and i know because the rule is my rule to myself when i did this i will not modify anything here mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, no modification rule right for example right now um out of the box competition on our category for gunpla there's no modification involved just painting. so how will mm-hmm. you make uh, modifications in a way and just using painting mm-hmm. this is a practice that i did i've been using this technique since 2003 and uh, this one actually was my first win on um like the first gbwc gbwc it's not yet called gbwc before so mm-hmm. it's either baka or baku so i was one um i joined with this style before already um, multiple panels mask into different um, tones and shading to create like separations of panels like steel plates yes yeah, steel yeah. plating right so it it's falsely creating separations without me doing scribing work if there's modification involved I would have like scribe those to get me um, in and have more like a te- texture on it yeah right? or yeah. Uh, a scribe line means mm. i can put my panel lines mm. deeper so i i can highlight my separation but these are all done by masking then i combine the the darker tones this darker tones actually is um wood textured the wood textured mm-hmm. i've used graphite to highlight my grains so uh, graphite graphite pencil pencils mm. so i i i look for the the hardest type of pencil that creates that particular shin that i i i, I like mm-hmm. when doing my my patterns mm-hmm. so i use this with a background in architecture i have a bunch of graphite that i can test so mm-hmm. that's an advantage in in a way so you can but you cannot use softer pencils softer pencils will just smudge yes so it will be Graphite messy pencils. yeah and the put, patterns of the wood grain how did you yeah i just like scribbled it scribbled it on individually yeah mm-hmm. on all those darker tones and this is there I think it's the lighting. There you go. There. Mm-hmm. So those are all my patterns. You can see. You can it see reminds me of like old drawers from yeah. like my that was the concept house. house. Yeah. Then I I kept it clean. I kept this build clean. Mm-hmm. The the most part, I that I've spent a lot of time doing mm-hmm. there you go mm-hmm. is the riveting see with, exactly. with, with, with an out of the box build I, I put my 100% effort in doing this build roughly how many rivets do you think you have in that build this alone um, the shield uh, this is the part that I counted the rivets it's at one um 700 to 900 rivets just for the shield just for the shield so for the whole kit um uh, probably three thousand three thousand individually <laughs> <laughs> so 
So these are all individual. I think I see a pattern here. Mm -hmm. It's really hard work. It is. I mean, if you really want to be competitive, you got to put um, in the work. I can say, Paolo, that mm -hmm. I won't repeat this technique again soon. <laughs> <laughs> it's... <laughs> Um, Do you use any tool to make sure that each no. rivet is it's, like properly distanced or no. you just like... Uh, eyeball and practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I just, you know, when you're here, I think I'll show you like what I did. It's, it's just a matter of holding your part properly and resting your, your um, hand. And I just do that stippling motion. And what did you use for the rivets? Um, I use two, two methods here. Um, my technical pens. Okay. And paint. Because some paint. areas I, I had to use paints. Okay. And the brush that do that. Uh, 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 so that should be a really fine brush. Fine brush, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, but I find it, uh, I found it more effective on the technical pen side but my worry on that is it smudges so i went with the brush and paint normal mm -hmm. paint mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so there you go um this build practically lasted maybe a week or plus or minus 79 hours of work mm -hmm. Total, uh, total seven, work. 79 hours <laughs> just for an entry grade. Yeah, if you, it's for just for an entry grade, but if you want something as detailed as that, and definitely yeah. worth and one the hours. More thing, I don't stop from that paint job. I still wanted to highlight a lot more because that's it. That's the concept, right? Plain metal work, sheeting, rivets, and wood. But I kind of like planned out on how to separate all my panels. See, I did masking here. Um, I, I have to plan on what will be the wood, what would be the metal um, graphite finish, and the steel work, even on the gun. Mm -hmm. See, you have to do your separations. Then, um, don't forget to detail. The scopes, for example, are still detailed. Not only that, if you go inside, even the ones that you cannot see, I detail, guys. Because personally, I know that I put my 100% mm -hmm. on this build, regardless mm -hmm. if you see it Anyone or not. Anyone sees it That's or not. That's just exactly. the back side of the shield. I still detail the hell out of it. Sorry for the French. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there even the joints for the manipulators or the hands i separated the colors from metallic to wood finish to wood. so okay. pretty much this is um hand painting and airbrushing um yeah mm -hmm. so i've used two two main um painting approach hand painting and airbrush for the main colors and a lot of masking work so there you go that's breaking down this build even mm -hmm. a simple kit that's a real grade and practical is one of my favorite real grade um high grade builds mm -hmm. yes because if you think about it it's it's a high grade but if you're able to paint it in a way to stand out that it will stand out stand it, it out. will stand out it will yeah, yeah. amazing yeah. amazing build thank you all right all right okay, now we're moving on we have we're our last on. kit our last kit is a master grade so that's a one 100 scale uh base kit is the gray zeta is that correct? Yeah. The Grey Zeta, this is built by Mr. One of the rarest kit out there. <laughs> really, it's a P Bandai kit. We don't even have that kit. So it's from Mr. Johnny. Yeah, Theodoro. built by Master Johnny. This mm -hmm. is his build. That's it. <laughs> this. <laughs> Just <laughs> one. <laughs> Just one. Where's the gold okay. though? So, 
We're gonna break down a build by Master Johnny. Johnny, Johnny, you're still there. I hope Johnny is still watching. Johnny, Johnny are you still watching? Correct me if I'm wrong with your build. Michael Tagaro is watching, Mr. Mark Kepi and Ellie Saliba. Hey, Mark, Hello, how are you? How's the Philippines? I hope you're building and I hope you're joining the competition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I yeah. hope you're done like, <laughs> building. Can we fit that on the camera? Here? Uh, probably not. So uh, uh, I think we'll just you use can this angle camera. It? Mm. Well, or suggest. you want to use that? I don't know. Guys, we'll just take our time adjusting this one because it's a huge kit. Okay. Uh, I'll be on the camera. Mickey, Mickey. Our third hand will be on the camera. Oh, hi, Mickey. What? <laughs> okay, so we need to make this hand. More that the wire is not long enough. Okay. There we go. Okay. There. I think I can do it just that way. We're good? Yep. You can see the camera? So you guys can see this is a massive kit with a lot of things going on so we have to be very careful with it and i i think this one is gifted by johnny already to me he's actually selling <laughs> this. Ah, to me yeah <laughs> how much is he selling this no it's not uh, sold it's for it's for sale guys if you want to buy it sold to tk free okay shall we continue okay so let's go. we went with the out of the box build, breaking down an out of the box build, how you can be competitive with out of the box, going down, run down again. Mm -hmm. Think about your, your concept. Stand out as much as possible. It, it's great if you're, you're referencing to um, a lot of um, pop culture or stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. But I kind of like will sway you out of that because people or the judges will recognize immediately and they will um there's two it's it's there's two ways mm -hmm. it can go for you it's either they love your concept that you put it in a gunpla or they will say um he used um iron man again as mm -hmm. his uh <laughs> as his guy so it's uh, so yeah Hi. <laughs> so yeah, it it, ca it could be good, it could be bad. It, yeah. it really depends on who's looking at it. Yeah. True. So mm -hmm. one thing that will jump on immediately is when you're competing with the sharks, mm -hmm. like <laughs> modified or custom builds, either scale models or um gunpla. With gunpla. Um, I've done a lot of Gunpla customizations throughout the years and I can say that standing out, doing your own style will uh, make you um, a unique uh, participant in a way. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't win, people will discuss your build. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. one. But don't do things that are like off the charts crazy that it's not already on the positive note. Mm -hmm. That's also so have, yeah. balance is Bal always ba uh, have okay. to be observed. Yeah, yeah I think so. On too, this yeah. particular build by Johnny, mm -hmm. he actually went all out. So mm -hmm. if you're looking at the base kit, it should be this only, right? In the center, the one with the gold. Mm -hmm. That's the gray seta only, and he over modified everything from this chest details um shoulder mounts and from that he actually like created this monstrous backpack which is mark if is actually saying you forgot to drop the backpack drop the backpack <laughs> um once we're done and off camera <laughs> we might have dropped it already no we don't know <laughs> yeah I'm sorry, Johnny. No, no, no. Just mm -hmm. kidding. We, it, it's well taken care of. So, mm -hmm. um, the backpack actually is his transport and weapon system. That's his concept when he was discussing this 
mm-hmm. um, to me during his, this stay on on the competition and this is Modeler's the Cup uh, the first one build off Gunpla build off it's Gunpla build off mm-hmm. so 2017 I think luckily he competed with one of the best mm-hmm. so Master Nat shout out <laughs> So this one, as I said, if you can see this um, in the left, it these are actually missile launchers, missile pods. He have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven missile pods carrier on this um, entry alone. And most people will say, how will that move? Well, that's his concept, guys. There's a lot of thruster systems here. Why do you have to move if you have missiles to fire <laughs> upon the enemy? Yeah. He, you don't have he, to he, move at all. That's yeah. the concept. And, he <laughs> yeah, have, exactly. and, and the thing with that, he have this drone um, system on as supports too. Yeah. Doesn't like, fit in the camera. Doesn't fit a, in the camera. AI so. piloted... Yeah. Um, I don't know what I they are. I can say this one will just stay static, just laughing how people, the, the enemy's efforts will be. Yeah. Then this two on his side will be the one moving and the missile pods will finish them all off. And if you guys can see, the missile that it launches isn't actually a missile but it contains several rockets. Yeah. Within pods. a missile, there, so it's there, just a pod. Yeah, exactly. A lot of pods here. Uh, yeah, but I won't. This one? No! <laughs> yeah, there, go. there. A missile. <laughs> Side pods. Uh, that's. Oh. One side. Yeah. Give me two sides. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Man, that's a lot. So if if I may be blunt regarding this build, okay, I'll just put this down first. If, if you did mention that he went all out with it, yeah. but if he went all out, but everything made sense, mm-hmm. then I think he was successful with yes. conveying what he wanted. Yeah. The point that we want mm. to like, um, that's why we, we brought this one here. Mm. Concept alone is really great. I love the idea. I love the detailing. Paint job, superb. The, the thing that um, you have to complete when you're um, doing work such as this, overcomplicated stuff, is avoid being um, your mindset to be, I want to put this here. There's a space here. Put this one again. Yeah, that has to make uh, sense. Yeah. <laughs> A, l- a lot of guys usually just glue things together without cohesiveness. There's another kit there that you want me to take that? Where? <laughs> There's another kit displayed there. Uh, where? <laughs> Excess baggage. <laughs> you, want, you want to create a comparison? There's, for example, uh, your kit bashing, yeah. Just an example by Paula, that excess baggage. Mm. It's a great build. But it's overly jump pack with um, kit bash bars. Backpacks. The thing <laughs> is, when you are just starting to kit bash, I'm pretty sure that um, if you have two kits, you wanna like kit bash them together. You will think of putting everything mm-hmm. on that part. It's very tempting. It's tempting, <laughs> but you have to have the threshold to say to yourself Ooh, when to enough. stop. Um, resist, because, resist the urge. <laughs> yeah, resist the urge. One is you'll probably overdo it. Then the next thing that will happen with that, it, it will snowball to that incomplete finish mm-hmm. or detailing mm-hmm. because you'll have to focus on every um, detail, right? Mm-hmm. If you overcomplicate your build modifications and you forgot to detail that particular um, part because you ran out of time. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You have yeah. to focus every um, thing that you put into this build. And Johnny did way more than that. And it's really good. But in terms of taste, man, this it's too much for me. <laughs> I, I cannot do this. It's in the name. 
What's what, the what, name? What's your name? Uh, Armada. Armada. Yeah, oh, I think okay. it's right. It, see? There you go. It goes back. It boils down to the concept. It's an Armada. He actually yeah, planned think, this from the start. Yeah, yeah. It, it's planned. That's one. It's planned. The concept is well executed. Detailed everything. There's no blank space that he left because I know that he ran out <laughs> of time. <laughs> No, he didn't. He focused on everything. That's I would have loved to like do multiple um, color separations on this though, but that's me personally. Let's talk about the build. These ones are these scratch build uh -huh. or yes. kit bash? Can you give us more like to, on the technical to break side? Down yeah. How do I achieve that? Yeah. Here. This is not just kit bash, guys. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of design involved. If you see all this, those patterns, this is the first time that you'll hear from me that um, he used, can I say it? Your secret tool. <laughs> <laughs> say it. Say it. Let's wait for him to answer. You can answer, Johnny, your secret tool on this Johnny, uh, scratch building. <laughs> Johnny, can we tell them your secret? Can I tell them? I need to know the paint mixture as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He's not uh, answering. I'll give you... He's uh, shaking at home. Two minutes or five minutes to answer, then I'll just let it pop. <laughs> Whether you answer or not, we will tell yeah. you. <laughs> I will tell him. It's bound to happen. Johnny, we're waiting. <laughs> What's your answer? So, when we said um, invest in your tools, we, uh, I was discussing a lot with Johnny about this. And mm -hmm. it's a tool that is very important in our arsenal, usually. Um, he used cry cuts here. You guys know Crycut? No, I don't. <laughs> so <laughs> explain, please. So it's an engraving machine. Mm hmm So it actually engraves all your details too and cut it for you. Ooh. Yeah, that's one. But the material is flat just plate. Flat plate. Flat plate. Yeah. Nice. A lot of guys actually use it now. Um and Jello. Mm -hmm. If Jello's here, he have a Crycut. So he, he used that before, um, 3D printing way back in 2014, 2013, I was doing that. Um, it helps me a lot, but guys, I'm telling you this now and I will be like countering all those, like it's cheating. No, it's not cheating. We're just thinking ahead. <laughs> because when you're saying it's 3D printed, it's not play and go. Yeah. That's one. Um, the most important one is to you have to understand your programs. We designed those 3D parts too. Mm -hmm. And including all this, he designed it in a program. So you have to know um, knowledgeable in program. It's not downloadable. Mm -hmm. you, you have to have the knowledge in design, measurements exactly. You have to understand the machine. Okay. Yeah. Technology is there to it help should be you, acceptable to already. give you so 3D yeah. print right now is one of the best things that happened in modeling. Guys, we're not getting younger. Yeah. That's you one. have to <laughs> someone, uh, someone from our audience is complaining. I, I just received sorry, like a laser <laughs> <laughs> laser stare from a far side. No, no, that's the truth. We are not getting um younger before i can probably scratch everything not to say that yeah i can do that uh, everything from scratch we can and i have the means to like do it properly uh, but it will take time because if i keep doing or sanding that to the tea cutting and stuff i your hands are not that great anymore mm -hmm. in handling mm -hmm. um exactly. those type of stress Mm -hmm. So 3D printing or 3D designing makes that work faster mm -hmm. for us. If you understand it, try the guys that are saying it's cheating, try designing. And I dare you, I'll print everything <laughs> for you. Design first and after you print it, you're still gonna like clean it. So that's still a lot of time invested in it. Mm -hmm. 
if I had my well, what's the difference in kit bashing? No, Finding actually, the... it's more faster to kit bash. Exactly, it's more faster to. If you found the do... the part that you want, you mm. just take that part mm. and try to integrate it to your kit. You're still gonna rework exactly. it, you know, integrate mm. it in your kit. It's still the same process as three D printing. I'm an advocate for three D printing, but because you have to catch up with technologies. Exactly. One. Because if you do, you follow just the OGs or stuff like that. Yeah, you you can. I'm one of, like, I do old school builds, then I do newer builds, right? And I try to incorporate as much of new technologies in in mm -hmm. in my builds, so I can catch up with the guys that are doing it. Even ILM right now are doing laser cutting, 3D printing. Then mm -hmm. what? Stopping me from learning what they're doing. Exactly. You have to open your Then they ban 3D printing. The Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so, um, 3D printing is now banned in GBWC and we still have to follow that, right? Mm -hmm. so, but in this competition, Otaku ME Modeler's Cup, we're more open to that. We're more open to technology and stuff. So there's a 3D printing, 3D printed um, clause. So, again, please read the rules properly guys mm -hmm. if you have any clarifications about 3d printing or 3d uh, using 3D design, printed parts yes yeah. please uh, message us we'll answer it for mm -hmm. you so there you go so break down this so all of this are just flat plates pretty much um majority of the straight ones so i think flat plates johnny is still on the stage out. of learning on creating more angles actually during this stage because i can see that he started off with squares. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that's, I don't know if he's still using it because he suddenly shifted to cars only. <laughs> yes, when yes. we go back. So we need him back in sci fi and gunpla builds. Mm -hmm. Johnny, mm -hmm. please come back. So, <laughs> so still, yeah. same story. Took a lot of time yes. to build this, and took a lot of I hard can... work. Um, go back to this build. I'll put that aside mm -hmm. and turn this one to the back mm -hmm. So you can see please don't drop it. Please don't drop it. Please, please don't, don't drop, drop it, it. Uh, <laughs> Mark Mark is just spraying. Okay. 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 It, it drops it's fine <laughs> As you can see this kit is actually signed by now walkie sign also so yeah. one of our judges Yeah, so it's a grail kit <laughs> <laughs> no, no damage. You didn't, you didn't see that. <laughs> so there you go. You can see all this work. This massive um, missile pod is can actually be carried by um, a carrier or a helper hand. There's also yeah. helper hands that holds to open. So there you go. It answer how he will like shoot it. He answered yeah, it already, it so it, it has like helper cranes and stuff at the back. So it's, it's not like, huh? That's like a magazine for it. It reloads yeah. from so, the side, right? So, yeah, that's what I said. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like a claw yeah, auto reloader. Yeah, yeah. Auto -re that's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Vicky. Sorry, man. <laughs> so, um, from this, you can, I think you can see a bit of the EXS booster. He smartly incorporated everything compacted at the back, so it will be hidden. So, there's huge boosters here. And I love the, the painting style here. Mm -hmm. It shows that he, his versatility in comes to anything that he builds. The style of um, burn burnishing paint jobs are here. Very yeah. aircraft. Staining. Yeah. Aircraft inspired uh, aircraft, painting. Uh, yeah. Moto GP builds. He, he do this mm -hmm. um, heat staining paint, mm -hmm. yeah. paint style. So I love it. And he kept his... See? Uh, Paulo, there. Mm -hmm. There you go. You see those engraves? Yes. These are actually the ones that um, being used by that engraver, the clay cutter. Mm. I think, two, um, not I think, Tumac has one. Mm. 
So he's been doing that and he's working on like uh, a big jabber base and I hope he completes that. There you go. Now, uh, you yeah, guys yeah. can see this. Those are engraved um, EFSF markings. So engraved guys, those are panels actually. Yeah. Instead of we just using use, a decal. We don't use panel line scriber weekend, but that will take us time. This is the edge uh, of on how to make your workflow more faster. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He actually leaves this on the machine and he can work on other details. Yes, that's yeah. that's the more advantage of technology right now. I'm very interested with that gold color. Gold color, that, man, I don't know that's how to mix, mix it. right? It's a custom mix, I think. Is it? Johnny. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny. Johnny, answer the question. Very. <laughs> and I, I love how he bro break, breaks the gold mm -hmm. with this white and blue. Kind of looks like the gold is like the outer armor. It's not a toned down gold, you know? It's yeah, not yeah. that gold. Gold, bright, bright gold. Yeah, yeah. It's almost not gold. Mm. But gold. <laughs> <laughs> almost not gold, but gold. So there you go. Mm -hmm. um, remember, yeah. when you're building things as massive as this, plan ahead. And with this type of build, he practically had maybe four months into this. Mm -hmm. Right, Johnny? Mm -hmm. Where are you? John, Johnny is the... <laughs> I think he's building the, the Senna. He's somewhere in the corner of his house. Thinking. Yeah, thinking, <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. You have any questions, guys? Yeah, guys, if you have any questions about the three kits that we discussed, Feel free to ask away. And one more thing I want mm -hmm. to, to like ask you guys. If you have any suggestion, is it worth it though, the ones that we're doing? Please tell us yes or no. Suggest on, on how to um, improve this segment a bit. Mm -hmm. You know, because this is the first time we're doing it. We're just doing it on the fly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think the, the main point is this, is that there's a lot, especially since our Modeler's Cup is now online and it's uh, everyone from around the world can join. There's probably a lot of first time joiners yeah. on the competition. So just to give them an insight on what they may be up against, what are what can, they can do, what they can add to their ongoing build. And just an insight if they haven't had this experience before, getting now? the insight from you. You, mm -hmm. you want me to tell now? Tell them now? Yeah. Which Maybe one? Maybe next week? Which one? The one that you're asking. Yeah, <laughs> tell them now. Make sure you the process on this. It's the mm -hmm. same one as the bigger one as well. Mm -hmm. Where? And the process, the, the effect of the uh, The staining effect? Uh, the, the, like the burning yeah now, a good question is yeah. if you want to be featured in the build breakdown or if you have someone you know that w you would like to be featured like any build that they've done before let us know message us and we'll uh, reach out to the person and we'll yeah. probably we can ask the kit why not you can borrow it for a day yeah. And then or we'll even images, here. If, even images. If you, if we can't borrow it. There is no possibility yeah. for you to drop your kits here mm -hmm. if you're from the other part of the world. Mm -hmm. You can email us your your entry or your build, mm -hmm. and we can try to like break it down, probably. Yeah, definitely. So oh, yeah, we will call this like a break it down segment. <laughs> <laughs> and if you guys want your builds to be featured, I mean. We'll be very, very happy to actually have those kits here and we can go ahead and discuss it and break it down. It not only helps us, but it helps the other modelers as well. To, I, to I'm learning too, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I learned a lot from this bit. Well, except from mine because... Mm. It's now, actually uh, very, very educating. It this, is. this segment that we're doing right now. That we're yeah, trying uh, to... From, from now that I... I um went into more detailed 
um, mm. discussion with Johnny's build. It's one of by far one of the best ones out there that joined our competition. At and it's for sale. Oh. How much? Sold. Two five hundred. Twenty five hundred dirhams. It's uh, don't mention sold. it. It's already <laughs> sold. It's to TK. <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking, yeah. If you want to own this piece of art, if you want to own this piece of artwork, guys, drop by the store. Contact details of Johnny is there. You can call him and make a deal on this baby. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but what's the mixture of the gold? We're waiting, Johnny. Yeah, <laughs> Johnny. Mickey is still asking for that <laughs> mixture of gold because he's painting gold. <laughs> Are you able to tell us? Because if I'm going to have a golden armor, this is if perfect. I want to be flashy, I want a golden armor, but efficient in battle as well. This is the gold that I want yeah, to it's, have. It's like it's gold, no, I don't oh. want like a shiny ceremonial gold. This is like fight ready gold. It's the gold of Jamie Lannister. Yes, exactly. So... Well, Johnny is not responding. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, again, guys, if you have any questions, just feel free to message us. And if you have any recommendations of which next builds we can discuss, please feel free to let us know. And we'll be very happy to actually feature those kits uh, on our next segment of our build breakdown. My RX is the pilot. <laughs> no! No! Cut! Cut! <laughs> Again, I think that's pretty much it for us for today. Yeah? Yeah. Did you guys enjoy? Yeah, yeah I think they're saying it's uh, it's worth it, keep it up, and it helps a lot of modelers. So, yeah, wow. we're very happy to continue if it's helped you guys. Yes. And, yeah, again, thank you so much for joining oh, us, guys. There's, there's the answer. There's the answer. What's the answer? Titanium gold. Titanium gold? Only you have it. Tamiya? Tamiya? <laughs> Tamiya titanium gold? Titanium gold? Really? Yeah. Is it? See? Now I've learned. <laughs> <laughs> this is good for um, FSS builds. Um, five star stories build. Mm -hmm. I like the gold on this. Then what's the top coat, Johnny? Johnny's probably like... Um, wait for another secret. 15, uh, wait for another 15 minutes, he'll answer. I, I can't give out everything, guys. It's a trick. Top secret. coat may be... There, this is not gloss coated. It's flat, I think. It's flat, but it has reflection. It reflects it light reflect pretty well. Because it has yeah. a uh, metallic pigment. It mm, will still have them. I oh, see. You're giving me ideas. Mm. Yeah. You can say my gloss. It's not glossy. It, it's not even semi-gloss, man. <laughs> All right. Probably, probably next week, Johnny will uh, give us the answer for that. Anyway, that's it for us for today. Thank you okay. so much, guys, for uh, joining us for today. Uh, Michael Tagaro is saying Super Clear 3, I, he thinks, because it's Johnny's favorite. Yeah, I know that Super Clear 3 was not available during <laughs> that time, so no. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, guys. And thank again, you. and thank uh, you, Johnny, for keeping us hanging. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and for everyone, guys. And if you have any more questions about the modeler Scott, you can visit our website. Go to the blog section. You can read the rules and uh, the terms there. And yeah, that's it for us for today. Thank you so much thank for you, joining us. And always remember, think, think outside, outside the gate. Bye bye. Thank you.